Hi, I'm Dewey. And I'm Minnie. And we are reading once again from a Smithsonian book of comic book comics. And today we're talking about Scribbly by Sheldon Mayer. I have never heard of this before. And uh, I can't tell you why this comic is important, but I think after we read this, I can explain. Okay. All right. Scribbly by Sheldon Mayer. Dinky and Sisty have been accidentally kidnapped by a gang of racketeers and are being held in a swanky gambling house. Me? That should be What you. kind of police chief are you anyhow? You know who's got them kids? Tubbs Torponi's gang. You chattling newsies? I, I don't know. I just came out. <laughs> Feels like it's appropriate. Could be. Now, wait a minute, lady. We've investigated Mr. Torponi, and he's absolutely innocent. You mean the big lug's got an alibi? But that wouldn't stop me. I'd walk in and arrest him anyhow. Now listen, lady, Mr. Torponi's a pretty powerful man in politics. You can't walk in and arrest him just like that. You gotta have some evidence. You mean you're afraid of the guy, huh? Okay, that's all I want to know. Come on, gang, let's get out of here. These dumb cops wouldn't be able to help us find our way out of a paper bag. Aw, oh, now listen, lady, that ain't so. That is a cute drawing for the cop. That is. I, I kind of love it. Say, Ma, you shouldn't have insulted the chief of police like that. He's doing the best he can. Well, why doesn't he try raiding one of the tubs Torponi's gambling joints? <laughs> That's great. Everyone in town knows he's a racketeer, except the cops. That's great. I bet you if the Green Lantern was on the job, we'd have the kids back in a minute. The Green Lantern? Who the heck is that? Yeah, and how? Oh, wow. That's bad balloon placement. That should have gone first. Oh, really? Yeah. We'd have the kids back in a minute. Yeah, and how? And then the Green Lantern. Who the heck is that? Oh, my. Okay. Well, he's a guy who just waits for something like this to happen, and then he puts on his mysterious costume, so nobody'd recognize him, and, and Zingo, he comes to the rescue. <laughs> Is that so? You say this Green Lantern fella, or whatever you call him, puts on a mysterious costume so nobody'd recognize him, and then he comes to the rescue, eh? Sure. In real life, he's a quiet guy nobody suspects. He's got extra special powers and nothing. But just make him mad enough about something that ain't justice, and whammo! He puts on his costume and goes to town. Well, what do you know? He puts on his costume and goes to town, eh? Hmm. Wonder what got into her all of a sudden. She just walked off like she was in a trance. How can she even talk about such nonsense when her child and mine are helpless in the hands of vile kidnappers? Meanwhile, here are the two helpless children who are in the hands of the vile kidnappers. <laughs> I love how there's an open quote. But not a closed quotes. Yeah. Is it not closed? Is that not an end quote? Um, I don't know. Might be a stain. Come on, you guys. I thought you were going to come and get us. Hey, sissy. That was our last bottle. Pow! Okay, then. In that case, these guys can have back the roll roulette wheel. Hey, look out with that wheel, kid. It's heavy. Oh, that's okay. We ain't gonna throw it. We just want to roll it down the stairs. Hey! Well, what's the matter with you guys? Didn't you catch them kids? We almost did, boss. But something happened. Well, if you want a job done right, you gotta do it yourself. I always say. I guess I'll have to go up and get them kids personally. I like him. He's cute. Mm -hmm. Come on, you kids. I know you're in there. If you don't come out when I count three, I'm coming in and get you. One, two, three. Ow! Pow! 
quick, grab his gun and help me get his suspenders off. His suspenders? Why? Never mind the dumb questions. Go over, get, go over and get all the bottles you can carry while I tie these suspenders to the chair. And step on it. Okay, okay. Now, let any one of them tough mugs try to come in after us. We'll give them a champagne celebration. Oh boy, a slingshot. Wow. Bam, bam. What's the idea of shooting off that gun like that, you dope? Gee, I was excited and it went off. Did you hear them shots? The boss must have finished them kids upstairs. Kids off. Come on, let's go upstairs. I don't remember which one you were doing. Yeah. You know, come to think of it, it ain't nice to shoot little kids. For them kind of kids, lead is good for their constitution. Yeah, which them brats again. Fire! Splat blam. Them kids is making monkeys of out of us. Get the Tommy gun. Right. Now listen, you brats. We got a Tommy gun out here. Come out peaceful like, or we'll have to use it. Go ahead and use it. The last guy that used a Tommy gun on us got it wrapped around his neck. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, oh, psst, Sissy, look who just woke up. Wow, we're cornered. Hey. All right, boys, come in. I got him. It's a huge lump on his head. <laughs> Whammo. Hmm? Another one. Hmm? Hmm? Come on, let's go win. The boss got the kids. It's okay now. Wow, who? Oh, mama. That's you. Oh. Oh. Come on in, boys. I just, I'm just in the mood to give you some trouble. You want to wrestle? Hmm? Hmm? I mean, that's obviously you because you've been getting all the superheroes. Right. Not for any other reason. Yeah. Who is this mysterious figure who has come to the rescue of Sisty and Dinky? Whoever he is, he certainly picked the right time to show up. Don't miss the next issue, kids. Mm. Look at them trying to throw us on a certain trail. Yeah. Why Big Brothers Leave Home by Scribbly. Hey, who took my glasses? I can't see where I'm going. Scribbly by Sheldon Mayer. Dinky and Sisty had been kidnapped by a gang of racketeers and were having a rather rough time of it when a weird figure appeared from nowhere and came to the rescue. Wow, look at that. Zowie, this is murder, but I love it. Pull in your heads, boys. You're going through a tunnel. Bong, bong, bong. Hey, mister, watch out. That lug pony is going for his gun. Don't bother the man about little details. I'll handle this. Stay with you, Torponi. You keep on waking up all the time. What do you got? Insomnia? <laughs> what the hell? Nice going, kiddo. That finishes a good day's walk. Work. Wow. Hello? Police department? Send over a couple of the boys to 54 Boyd's Drive and have them pick up the kidnappers of Sissy Honko and Zinky Gibbet. You heard me? Hmm? Hmm? These kids are confused all the time. Hmm. 54 Birch Drive? Why not stop Torpony's place? Are the kids safe and sound? Sure, but Torpony and his gang are slightly damaged. I'll send a radio call right over. Who is this speaking, please? But you're talking to none other than the Red Tornado in person. Not Tomato. <laughs> I said Tornado. The Red Tornado. Stop your wisecracking and send over your little blue Cossacks. Or I'll go over there. And wreck your joint too, you hear me? There now. That looks like the nicest and neatest pile of gangsters the cops in this town ever took in. You said it. My, don't they look peaceful. Look, kids. I've got to go before the cops come. Each of your kids take a bottle, and if any of those lugs show signs of coming to, slug them. Yes, that's you. Yes, sir. We're good at that. Anyhow. Goodbye, Mr. Tornado. Thanks for helping us out. Think nothing of it. It was a pleasure. A little while later at the Gibbet home. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Gibbet. What? You found the kid children and caught the kidnappers? That's wonderful. I'm so relieved. Thank you. Thank you. Scribbly, 
The police are bringing Dinky and Sissy home. We've caught the kidnappers. Strip is called Scribbly and he's barely in it. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm going over and tell the Hunkles. You bring the kids over as soon as they get here. Hey gang, they've caught the kidnappers. My mother will be bringing the kids over any minute. No kidding. Uh, yeah, I think it was you. Say, say, mom ought to know about this. She was so worried. Worried. She went out for a walk two hours ago and didn't come back yet. Here we are. Hi, again. Well, well, hello, kids. You sure have been through some excitement. You'll have to tell us all about it. Well, in the first place, the police didn't save us. We were saved by a mystery man. Yeah, and what is he from? Wow, his name's the Red Tornado. Ha <laughs> ha, listen to him. You kids have been reading too many comic books. What's all the excitement here? Hello, Mom, we're back. Me and Sissy got saved by the Red Tornado. Did you ever hear of such a thing? The kids insist they were rescued by a mystery man. We were too, he was a great big feller. He was, eh? What did he look like? Well, he was about 15 feet tall, and he was dressed in red and yellow and all kinds of colors. And his head was made out of iron. <laughs> did you hear that? His head was made out of iron. What baloney. But I spoke to the police chief, and he said he doesn't know anything about a mystery man. <laughs> I love the voice you're using for this woman. It's like very stereotypical... 1950s, uh, 1950s house. I, I just feel like her drawing evokes it. <laughs> yeah. She has a certain grace to her that the other characters don't. She's even drawn slightly differently. Yeah. He doesn't, eh? Well, who the heck rescued the kids then? Why, the police chief said he rescued them single-handed. Oh, he did, eh? Brave guy, that police chief. Excuse me. I'm going for another walk. What's the matter with her? That's the second time today she decided to go for a walk. Meanwhile, at the police station... Well, boys, you can write in your papers that Police Chief Gilhooli is entirely responsible for the rescue of them two kids. Any talk you heard about the Red Tornado is pure nonsense. There ain't no such person. Would you like to bet on that? I wonder who the Red Tornado is. I, should, should I change my voice? No, I mean, I think it's pretty telegraphed who the Red, Red Tornado is. I know, but the kids, everyone thought it was a man, though. Well, that's because the, uh, you know, her voice is muffled by the saucepan she's wearing. <laughs> Hey, who do you think you are breaking in like this? You're under arrest. Oh, shut up. You talk too much. Say, are you fellas newspaper men? Yes, we are. Who are you? Boys, you're talking to none other than the Red Tornado. The guy who really rescued them two kids, kidnapped kids, and captured Tubbs Torponi. Chief Gilhooli said he... Chief Gilhooli is full of baloney. You can't talk about me like that. I'll call the police. Police! Arrest this man. Police! What's the matter, Chief? Arrest is not quick. Oh, ho. Here's where we play ten pins again. Too <laughs> strong. He's gone. Wow, what a man. What a story. The next day... Say, look at all these headlines in the papers about the Red Tornado. Wow, he's some guy, eh, Scrib? Yeah, but the paper I work for didn't get a story on him. Boy, what I wouldn't give for a real good look at the guy so I could draw his picture for page one. Well, you never can tell, Scrib. Maybe you will. Maybe you will. Hmm? Huh? And if Ma Hunkle says he will, he will. After all, who should know better than the Red Tornado himself? Uh, herself. I didn't see that coming. Mm. Why Big Brothers Leave Home by Scribbly. Tisk tisk. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. 
send in your ideas, blah, 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 blah. Okay. For everyone, there are actually four red tornado stories here in this book. We only read two. The reason for that is because if we read everything, it would take too long. So we're going to um, not read every single story in this book. We're just going to go through every single character. So in a case like this one, we're only reading uh, the two stories that debuted the red tornado. About Scribbly and Sheldon Mayer, the following early sequence from Sheldon Mayer's Scribbly is hardening evidence, hardening evidence that the implicit pomposity of the costumed superheroes received romping, low comic comment almost from the moment of their arrival and in a comic book from National, the home of the most popular superheroes. The Scribbly feature did not quite begin with this uninhibited superhero buffoonery. In the first issue of All American Comics, it introduced the adventures of a would-be boy cartoonist, and it developed and explored that premise for 10 subsequent years, not only in All American, but in the young protagonist's own magazine. Mayer was also editor of All American, and Scribbly was a comic interlude among the earnest doings of the Green Lantern, the Atom, and a rescue on Mars. Predictably, perhaps, Scribbly sometimes confused his own life with the events in his cartoonist's fantasies. Mayer was born in 1917 in New York City, where he worked as an assistant and occasional ghost to several established cartoonists beginning in 1932. By 1936, in addition to his other work, Mayer had begun to help with the editing of a new comic book line for Dell, and thus he was a founding professional of the comic book. He held the, editori the editorship of All American and its related titles for 10 years, and he continued to write features of all kinds for national comics after that. After Scribbly, however, Mayer's most respected feature was another humor strip, Sugar and Spike, begun, begun in 1956 and continued through 1971. It was his own reaction to the many derivative comic book imitations of Hank Ketchum's newspaper feature, Dennis the Menace, and his own determination not to do another one. In Sugar and Spike, Mayer came up with two spunky infants, merrily observing and involving themselves in the adult world, but communicating in a gibberish baby talk that only they and the reader understood. As we join the Scribbly saga, the formidable Ma Hunkle has bought a grocery store, and some racketeers have made the mistake of trying to collect protection money from her. She has mussed them up, and they have fled in their car, not knowing that Ma's daughter Sisty and Scribbly's brother Dinky have locked themselves in the rumble seat. What do you think? It's very fun. You knew who she was right away, right? I mean, all, as soon as I started reading it, I was like, oh, I should I should probably do her voice. But then I realized I shouldn't have done her voice. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. That's what happens. Yeah. So, um, something that the intro didn't cover is that the red tornado so national comics is dc comics that's what it was called back then the red tornado is dc comics's first female superhero okay why is she so strong it's a joke comic oh okay so That's she it. just is she just is <laughs> You can get away with things in a joke comic that you can't get away in, with a serious comic. This was what number issue? Twenty. Okay. Did we already? Did they already establish she was strong before this, or is like this is decided in issue twenty? Ah, oh, yeah, she's strong. I believe it was decided that she established that she was tough. You know, like tough guy, tough. I don't think it was established that she was, I can run over 10 cops stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, what? But she's basically Popeye strong. Right. That is a class of strength that doesn't get talked about often. Popeye strong. Popeye on spinach strong. Popeye on, she's basically Popeye on spinach strong. But I think, I do think you can get away with things in a humor thing that you can't get away with. Like, you know, if, the first thing that the Superman strip does is, is it explains why he has power. Why he has his he has his powers, right? Mm -hmm. And this one is just like, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny that way. 
but they already established that she was strong before. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, what they said was they she had mussed up the gangsters. Okay. That's it. But yeah, she's the first fem female superhero that DC Comics has. She predates Wonder Woman by almost two years. She's seen more fun than Wonder Woman. Oh, shots fired. She's really fun. Wonder Woman isn't even in this book. Mm -hmm. As weird as that is, you'd think that there would be that particular representation. But it seems that that went to the Red Tornado my uncle. That's interesting. Where did they come out the same year? Like, what year was my uncle? My uncle was like early 1940, and Wonder Woman's December 1941. Well, there you go. Understandable, then. Understandable. Yeah. She's not the first female superhero. There are others, but they mostly came from publishers that no longer exist and were actually defunct by the time this book was published in 1989. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of the biggest companies that are still around, Ma Hunkel is the number one, the first female superhero. How long was she a superhero for? She's still around. Really? So she still has a comic book ongoing. She doesn't have a comic book ongoing. She has. Um, she still shows up. So there's a there's a superhero team in DC called the Justice Society. Mm -hmm. So they're basically the precursor to the Justice League. Um, and the Justice Society was active during World War II. And they established that Ma Hunkel used to be a member. So when they revived the Justice Society in like the 2000s, they decided Ma Hunkel was going to be a cast member. So she was basically the, the housekeeper for their headquarters. But she's still strong. So the way that they brought her back was that they had a whole issue uh, where they were looking for um, a street Santa. So it was a Christmas special. A street Santa. Yeah. Okay. So it was a Christmas special. And then they found one street Santa that was beating up all of these criminals. And then turns out it was my uncle. The original Red Tornado. Yeah. I mean, I would want to read more about my uncle. I'm intrigued. Are you saying we should read the other two stories? I mean, not necessarily on camera, but like just in general. I'm just curious. Uh, she's like a hoot. She's great. I love her. I love how they wrote it too. So, so this was 1940, and the uh, Batman we read was 1939. We're going. This is in chronological order, I think. Oh, I see. And Superman. Um, 1938. So far, we're going in chronological order. I don't know if the rest of the book goes in chronological order. Because it's going by character. Yeah. So there are probably characters here where you see a gamut of their stories. But I don't know. So far, we're going chronologically. Okay. What do you think of the quality of the story? I think it's amazing. Really? Amazing? I mean... Compared to like the first Batman and the first Superman, but then this is this isn't the first, so that like maybe that's not fair, right? Also, you know, like the thing said, he was already an established cartoonist, mm -hmm. Sheldon Sheldon Mayer. So that's why he's such a distinct voice. I think so, and a distinct style. Yeah, like look at that. That's hard to draw, because. Even at a bigger size, yeah. right? You're you'd probably be working with like that much space to draw that much. Yeah. And unlike the other two, the Superman and the Batman ones, everyone is in proportion. That's true. It it can be as cartoony as you want, but everyone is still in proportion <laughs> in this in this picture. No, I mean everything about it seems more like sophisticated. Oh, nice word. But it is, right? It is, yeah, because the other two are a little cruder. Like, it's more elevated. The dialogue, the distinct characters, like, you immediately get who they are based on 
the words and the, the way they're drawn. The way they're drawn. Yeah. That's why it's so easy to like say like, oh well, she has this voice. It's easier to give them voices, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Not that my voices were any good, but like it was just but I was more compelled though, you know what I mean? Well, it's it's not we are not professional voice actors mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, you can come at us for the quality of the voices we use, it's fine. But I think what we're trying to say is like it's easier to think of a voice to use with these guys. Like in your head. In your head. In your <laughs> in my head. Like it, I heard a clear thing. I may not be able to relay it, relay it, but like I heard it here. So yeah. It's pretty impressive. And like the the speed of the the action. Uh -huh. You know, it's like it's really like nonstop. It's interesting because you say the speed of the action. We read two stories, four pages each. Mm -hmm. There's virtually no action in the second one. Because the second one is she's done. She's beating them up. Right? Like maybe like the action is on one page and then she's beating them up. The rest of it is them being like, oh, who saved you? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you can feel the energy from everyone. Like you can really feel the energy from the kids. From the, of... the kids are amazing. They are amazing. Like even <laughs> Sisty. <laughs> like just naming her i mean i guess it's short for sister um, maybe <laughs> oh disty oh <laughs> no maybe not i don't know because they're not brother and sister right well then i have no idea what sissy is short for look i don't know um because I know the book is named Scribbly, and Scribbly was barely in this one. Yeah. So I don't know what thought process it was to be like, let's not focus the strip on Scribbly. But I think it was for the best because, frankly, Scribbly didn't look that interesting. Yeah. Is But, like, I suppose the first 19 issues were more Scribbly oriented. I don't know. Have you read Scribbly comics? No, not really. These are the Scribbly comics that I've read. Um, I think the reason I wouldn't find it that interesting is because you've seen what Scribbly looks like, right? Yeah. Okay. That's Sheldon Mayer. I see. So I feel like Scribbly's a little self-indulgent. Yeah. And I saved this here just to show it to you. Right. Right. That That is basically a self-insert. Yeah. What do you think of Ma Hunkle, the Red Tornado's costume I think design? it's awesome. That's like, okay, it's a pot for a helmet. But like, <laughs> she was able to cut, I mean, she's super strong. So that's how she was able to cut the, the eyes. The eyes out probably with a knife. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess those are like pajama or like, no, not long johns. Uh-huh. Um, I have no idea what the top is. It's just underwear on top of underwear, I think. No? Did Is that a drawing, though? Like, what's that insignia? Uh, let's see. Is it a tornado? I suppose it must be. It must be a tornado. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that must be a tornado. First time I ever saw this version of the Red Tornado was I was three years old. Uh, we had a comic called Who's Who in the DC Universe, right? Mm -hmm. And what that's not really a comic. What is what it is? It it goes. It shows you character profiles of all of these characters. And I had a toy of the the current Red Tornado, which is have you ever seen this guy? Like, no, I've never heard of a red tornado. Okay. He was he made a small cameo in that Batman episode where Wonder Woman turns into a pig. Oh. Uh, but he's an android, so think of the vision. He's also red. Okay. Literally red. Okay. Um and he controls wind. So he can turn into how, a, how a tornado. The red tornado go from Ma Hunkle to that guy. The same the because my uncle just didn't stop being published for like a long time and then eventually they were like let's just use the same name so this red tornado that i'm speaking of 
Uh, he can control the wind. And weirdly, he had an arrow on his head. Oh. Pointing downwards. What are you saying? I think it's probably a coincidence. Really? I think it's probably a coincidence. But I, I but I did have it play with the red tornado. So and then I looked was looking through who's who, and I saw that that red tornado was red tornado two. And I was like, who's red tornado one? And I flipped one page over, and I saw a drawing of Ma Hunkle. So like, imagine looking at somebody like the Vision. And then turning it over and seeing that his precursor is this amazing piece of design right here. Of course, as a kid, I was like, oh, no, that's so stupid. Oh, really? That's so stupid. He's wearing a pot. And now I think this is delightful, delightful and amazing. Yeah. Would you... Well, one, do you think this has aged well, like in terms of, you know, let's say political correctness and such? Huh. Did she beat anyone up who shouldn't have been beaten up? No, they're all gangsters. She didn't hurt anyone else. Oh, and she was fighting the cops. I'd say that's aged well. Mm. I suppose then it has. He's dealing with corrupt cops in 1940. Yeah. That's pretty that's pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. Um the reason I'm asking that is like would you watch a Ma Hunkle movie? Yeah. I absolutely would. Yeah. The question is who would you cast? Who would you cast as Ma Hunkle? I mean, if you're going for someone who looks believably strong, like obviously you have um the lady from Game of Thrones and Green Sandman. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... She's too tall. Yeah. No. She, I mean, she is, but I'm just saying she's... He believes, like, she's that strong. Um, Gwendolyn Christie is her name. Right, Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah. Um, I think, like, if this had been the 80s... And this person may have fallen out of favor recently, but Roseanne or um. So we're looking for somebody with a Roseanne type. I think. Or Rosie O'Donnell. Also Rosie O'Donnell. She was gonna be my next. Uh, I guess there's not a lot right now. Huh? Right. Would fit that particular mm -hmm. body type. She reminds me of that girl from Encanto, the strong one. Yeah. Louisa. Louisa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess she doesn't have to be white. I think now oh, no, she there's... probably wouldn't be white. I don't think there's... I don't think she has to be any skin color. Yeah, yeah. But also, when she's wearing this, it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. What's... So that also opens you up to, like, other possibilities. That's true. Um... But yeah, I would totally watch because I think it would be funny. It would have to be a comedy. Oh, it would just be depressing if we did a grim and gritty Ma Uncle movie. Chris Nolan Ma Uncle. Chris Nolan's Ma Uncle. That would be terrible. Let's write it. Chris Nolan's Ma. <laughs> you could it. probably just get AI to write that. Chris Nolan's Ma Uncle. Mm. It's also not worth doing. What about a cartoon? Would you tune in for a cartoon? Mm. Maybe the joke would run thin quickly. Then. Yeah, maybe. I believe that these two kids eventually became her sidekicks. The, the Cyclone twins. That's cool. I mean, they definitely have like sidekick energy. Like I can see them kicking ass. So Ma Uncle, the Red Tornado, and the Cyclone Twins. That's really cute. Oh, this is a Sheldon Mayer drawing in 1986. He did not lose a step. Huh. Let's see. Abigail Mathilda Hunkle, housewife, grocer, and newspaper woman. Married. Married to Hunk Hunkle. <laughs> 
Huey Hunkel is his, is her son. Sisty Hunkel. Sisty is her daughter. Okay. Gus and Horman Hunkel. Herman Hunkel, uh, her brothers-in-law, Felix Hunkel, is her nephew. She is 5'10 and 230 pounds. So she's my height. Okay, I'm just going to read it out loud. The first meeting of boy cartoonists Scribbly, Jibet, and Huey Hunkel was one that led to mutual animosity until Huey's mother st stepped in to make peace. Ma Hunkel... Ma Hunkel always believed in peace, but when necessary, she had the muscle to make the toughest troublemakers do some second thinking. Scribbly and Huey became best friends, while Scribbly's kid brother Dinky and Huey's kid sister Sisty began a junior league romance. Oh? Sisty was a scrapper who took after her mother. When Huey's uncle Gus hit a 100 to 1 shot at the track, Ma used the winnings to buy Schultz's grocery. This made her the target of a protection racket, but she refused to pay. While the hoods were in the store, Dinky and Sisty were playing in the rumble seat of their car and routed by Ma, the crooks took off unaware that they were inadvertently kidnapping two kids. I see. Scribbly and Huey said if Green Lantern were on the job, he would get it done. Ma was un unacquainted with GL, so the boys told her about him and she did some planning. Dinky and Sisty had been giving the mobsters a hard time, but it looked as if they had had it when a mysterious figure appeared, the Red Tornado. Soon crime in the neighborhood was nearly extinct, but whenever it raised its ugly head or when any kind of injustice occurred, whether actually illegal or not, the new mystery man was on hand to set things right. Scribbly drew a picture of the hero for his paper, the morning dispatch, and wound up with a raise. But a masked man, taking the law into his own hands, got the police after the tornado. To elude them, Ma put the costume on a gorilla she freed from its zoo cage. I would totally watch this. Captured and unmasked, the ape seemed proof that the whole red tornado business was a hoax. Criminals were heartened and went back into business, and the tornado was hung up literally on a flagpole thanks to a slip while negotiating a building ledge. Though she was unaware that the red tornado was her mother, Sisty got the idea to make costumes for herself and Dinky. They then became the cyclone kids and would have been killed had not the tornado come loose at last from the pole and landed on the crooks. The Red Tornado showed up at the first meeting of the Justice Society of America, but made a hasty retreat due to an embarrassing accident to her costume while entering through a window. Thus, she lost her opportunity to join the group. Oh, sad. So this was 1986. She did eventually join the group. Okay. And uh, is now with her housekeeper. Somehow she's still alive. I don't know how. With no power, no powers, but her natural muscle and no weapons, but whatever came to hand, like a bottle or a flower pot, the Red Tornado was able to defeat whole gangs of criminals and even cleaned out all the Nazis in town during World War II. Not well educated, she still had native intelligence, and when the dispatch owner joined the army, she even helped Scribbly run the paper in both identities. I would totally watch. Yeah, I'm surprised like that I've never heard of her before. She's not well known. That is definitely a tornado. Yeah. Yeah, she's not a well-known character. But, and I think she's definitely a product of her time. What do you mean? I doubt that you come up with someone like her today. Like, as adorable as she is. But, I mean, like a, a protection racket, you know. I mean, she looks like she came from Newsies. She she reminds me of Popeye. Oh, yeah. I could see that. And I don't think you come up with Popeye today, either. Like, you mean specifically a sailor who likes spinach mm -hmm. and is strong because of it? Kind of. Yeah. What do you think of this whole thing where she has to dress up like a man? Did she dress up like a man? Well, everyone thinks she's a man. Maybe that's just their own... Subconscious bias? Yeah. Again, does that body look that different from how it looked in the dress? I don't know. No. Like, is she wearing a binder? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. But the question is, so... If she were so adamant that the red tornado gets the proper credit mm -hmm. for um, saving the kids. 
why would she not be as adamant about them getting the gender right? I guess you can't see her boobs. No, she's completely covered. You see, yeah, that's another thing. Like because this is a cartoon, you know, I feel like it can be vague. It it can be super vague. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way Ma Uncle is drawn. No, because like they're wait. See. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just the way Ma Uncle's drawn. That's just the way she looks. Okay, yeah. then yeah, she didn't dress up like a man. So. Yeah. Do you think that joke flies in 2023? Probably not. No. What do you mean? Like, oh, she's actually a woman. But we all thought she was a man. No. It's not as funny. But in that time, it's pretty funny. But I also don't think that that's the sole reason this is funny. It's not. It's all funny. Like, even reading... um how she lost the opportunity to be part of the Justice Society. Oh. And that's sad, but like amusing in its way. Yeah, well totally. Like the the part where she um puts the costume on an ache. Yeah, that's funny. I totally watched that immediately. Well, I think that's it. I think we've exhausted what we're gonna talk about for the Red Tornado. Do you have anything else to add? Nothing. I mean, I just think it's a exceptionally well made comic. I know. I love it. Yeah. So there you go. We have read three stories from a Smithsonian book of comic book comics the first appearance of Superman, the first appearance of Batman, and technically the first appearance of the Red Tornado, although clearly not the first appearance of Ma Hunkle. And which of these three was the best? Go read some comics and find some gems. <laughs> because it's not the first two. <laughs> Ma Uncle. Evan, you found respect. Oh, when was the first time you read this? Uh, must have been 12, probably. Did you like it when you were 12? I found it amusing, but you know, being 12, I'll be like, Where I don't have time for funny stuff, enjoy funny stuff while you can, enjoy funny stuff when you can. If it means, even if it means like when you're much older, there's a time that you'll enjoy funny stuff. Words of wisdom, join us next time. We will be reading. I don't know who's next. We will be reading Plastic Man. You familiar with Plastic Man? I don't know. Is he like Mr. Fantastic? Yeah, so you know who Plastic Man is. Is he Mr. Fantastic? He's not Mr. Fantastic. Okay. No, Mr. Fantastic is from the Fantastic Four. Plastic Man predates him by like 20 years. Okay. But we'll get to that uh, next time. Click like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in a month.